Kenneth Robert Rosewall AM, MBE is a former world top-ranking amateur and professional tennis player from Australia. He won a record 25 tennis majors including 8 Grand Slam singles titles and before the Open era a record 15 Pro Slam titles and a record 35 major finals overall. He won the Pro Grand Slam in 1963. Rose Wall won 9 slams in doubles with a career double Grand Slam. He is considered to be one of the top male tennis players of all time. He had a renowned backhand and enjoyed a long career at the highest levels from the early 1950s to the early 1970s. He was one of the two best male players for about nine years and was the world number one player for a number of years in the early 1960s. He was ranked among the top 20 players, amateur or professional, every year from 1952 through 1977. Rose Wall is the only player to have simultaneously held Pro Grand Slam titles on three different surfaces. At the 1971 Australian Open he became the first male player during the Open era to win a Grand Slam tournament without dropping a set. Rose Wall was born in Sydney into a family that played tennis and owned tennis courts. A natural left-hander, he was taught by his father to play right-handed. Perhaps as a result of this unorthodox training, he developed a powerful and effective backhand but never had anything more than an accurate but relatively soft serve. He was 1.70 m tall and weighed 67 a kg and was ironically nicknamed muscles by his fellow players because of his lack of them. He was, however, fast, agile, and tireless, with a deadly volley. His sliced backhand was his strongest shot, and, along with the very different backhand of former player Don Budge, has generally been considered one of the best, if not the best, backhands yet seen. The father of Brett and Glenn Rose Wall, and grandfather of five, Rose Wall now lives in northern Sydney. Career, amateur career, 1950 through 1956, at the age of 15 and still a junior player, Rose Wall reached the semi-finals of the 1950 New South Wales Metropolitan Championships, where he was defeated by the world-class adult player Ken McGregor. The following year, he won his first men's tournament in Manly. In 1952, still only 17, Rose Wall reached the quarterfinals of the U.S. Championships, upsetting the top seeded Vic Syriaxes in the fourth round 3 a Euro 6, 6 a Euro 2, 7 a Euro 5, 5 a Euro 7, 6 a Euro 3 before losing to Gardner Malloy in five sets. In his end of year rankings, the British tennis expert Lance Tingay ranked Rose Wall and Lou Hode, his equally youthful doubles partner, jointly as the 10th best amateur players in the world. Rose Wall was only 18 years old when he won the singles titles at the Australian Championships, the French Championships, and the Pacific Southwest Championships in 1953. He was the top seed at Wimbledon but lost a quarter-final match to Kurt Nielsen. Rose Wall then reached the semi-finals at the U.S. Championships, where he was defeated by Tony Trabb at 7 a Euro 5, 6 a Euro 3, 6 a Euro 3. Rose Wall lost again to Trabbett in the challenge round of the Davis Cup in Melbourne, Australia 6 a Euro 3, 6 a Euro 4, 6 a Euro 4. Rose Wall, however, won the fifth and deciding rubber of that tie, defeating Syriax at 6 a Euro 2, 2 a Euro 6. 6 a Euro 3, 6 a Euro 4. At the end of the year, Tingay placed Trabert first and Rose Wall second in his annual amateur rankings. In 1954, Rose Wall defeated Trabert in a five set semi final at Wimbledon but lost the final to Zhrislav Drobna 1 half 13 a Euro 11, 4 a Euro 6, 6 a Euro 2, 9 a Euro 7. Rose Wall won the singles title at the Australian Championships for the second time in 1955, defeating Hode in the final 9 a Euro 7, 6 a Euro 4, 6 a Euro 4. At the US Championships, Trabert defeated Rose Wall in the final 9 a Euro 7, 6 a Euro 3, 6 a Euro 3. In 1956, Rose Wall and Hode captured all the Grand Slam men's doubles titles except at the French Championships from which Rose Wall was absent. For several years in their youthful careers, Rose Wall and Hode were known as the Goldust Twins. In singles, Rose Wall lost to Hode in the final of two Grand Slam tournaments. At the Australian Championships, Hode defeated Rose Wall 6 a Euro 4, 
3 a Euro 6, 6 a Euro 4, 7 a Euro 5 and at Wimbledon, Hode won 6 a Euro 2, 4 a Euro 6, 7 a Euro 5, 6 a Euro 4. Rose Wall, however, prevented Hode from winning the Grand Slam when Rose Wall won their final at the US Championships for a Euro 6, 6 a Euro 2, 6 a Euro 3, 6 a Euro 3. During his amateur career, Rose Wall helped Australia win three Davis Cup challenge rounds. Rose Wall won 15 of the 17 Davis Cup singles rubbers he played those years, including the last 14 in a row. Professional career 1957 through March 1968. Promoter and former tennis great Jack Kramer tried unsuccessfully to sign the Wiz kids to professional contracts in late 1955. But one year later, Rose Wall accepted Kramer's offer. Rose Wall, during the challenge round of the Davis Cup, tried to convince his partner Hode to do the same, but he rejected the proposition. 1957 Rose Wall played his first professional match on January 14, 1957, at Kong Stadium in Melbourne against the reigning king of professional tennis, Pancho Gonzalez. Rose Wall explained later that there was a huge gap between the amateur level and the professional level. In their series of head to head matches in Australia and the US, Gonzalez won 50 matches to Rose Wall's 26. During this period, Rose Wall also entered two tournaments. The Australian Pro at Sydney in February and the US Pro at Cleveland, Ohio in April. He was respectively defeated in straight sets by Frank Sedgman and Pancho Segura. In September, Rose Wall won the Wembley title, beating Segura in the final. This was a significant victory for Rose Wall because, of the top professional players, only Sedgman and Tony Trabert did not play. At the end of the year, Rose Wall won an Australian tour featuring Lou Hode, Sedge Mann, and Segura. Rose Wall's record in early 1957 confirmed the difference of level between the best professionals and the best amateurs at the time. After World War II, many of the best amateurs failed in the professional ranks. Other talented and hard-working players succeeded, after a few months or a year, to win important professional events, including Jack Kramer, Segura. Gonzalez, Sedge Mann, Trabert, Hode, Andra Copyright S. Gimeno, Rod Laver, and Rose Wall. 1958 In 1958, Rose Wall had the opportunity to show that he was still one of the best players on clay. The previous year, no French professional championships had been held. This tournament returned in 1958, and Rose Wall beat Jack Kramer, Frank Sedge Mann, and an injured Lou Hode in successive matches to claim the title. Rose Wall was the runner-up at the Forest Hills Pro and tied for second in the Masters Round Robin Pro in Los Angeles. Those tournaments were among the most important of the year. 1959, for the first time since he turned professional, Rose Wall had a favorable 6 a Euro 4 win-loss record against Pancho Gonzalez for the year. Rose Wall won both editions of the Queensland Pro Championships in Brisbane defeating Tony Trabert in the January final 6 a Euro 2, 4 a Euro 6, 3 a Euro 6, 7 a Euro 5, 6 a Euro 1 and Gonzalez in the December final 1 a Euro 6, 7 a Euro 5, 8 a Euro 6, 8 a Euro 6. 1960. The following year Rose Wall was incorporated in a new world pro tour, from January to May, featuring Gonzalez. Segura and new recruit Alejandro Alex Olmedo. This tour was perhaps the peak of Gonzalez's entire career. The final standings were, 1, Gonzalez 49 matches won a Euro 8 lost, 2, Rose Wall 32 a Euro 25, 3, Segura 22 a Euro 28, 4, Olmedo 11 a Euro 44. Rose Wall was therefore far behind Gonzalez on this tour the American having won almost all their direct confrontations. Halfway through the North American part of the tour the standings were Gonzalez 23 a Euro 1 and Rose Wall 11 a Euro 13. Just after Gonzalez played and won a minor tournament on May 16, 1960 he decided to retire. In the absence of Gonzalez, Rose Wall clearly became the leader, winning six tournaments including the two greatest tournaments of the year, the French Pro at Roland Garros and Wembley Pro. 
Hode was finalist in Paris and also won four tournaments making him second to Rose Wall. Measured to current standards Gonzalez would not have been ranked number one because he had only played four and a half months in 1960, he wouldn't have accumulated enough race points to be the first but in 50s or 60s standards he was, for many the number one. At the time Hode considered Gonzalez the best and Rose Wall didn't consider himself as the pro king but others thought that Rose Wall's successes in the biggest tournaments made him the number one in the world. Robert Geist, in DEA Gra SSTE Meister, died in Qual one quarter a DIG Carrier de Australischen Tennis players Kenneth Robert Rose Wall compromises by ranking them equal. 1961, after ten years of world touring, Rose Wall decided to take several long holidays in order to spend time with his family and he didn't enter any competition in the first half of 1961. He trained his longtime friend Hode when the pros toured in Australia where Gonzalez, back to the courts after a seven and a half month retirement, won another world tour featuring Hode, Olmedo, Jaimono and the two new recruits Mackay and Buchholz. In the summer Rose Wall returned to the circuit and won the two biggest events tradition, the French Pro at Roland Garros and Wembley Pro. At Roland Garros the Australian captured the title by beating Gonzalez in the final, 2 a Euro 6, 6 a Euro 4, 6 a Euro 3, 8 a Euro 6, and at Wembley he defeated Hode in the final, Gonzalez's winner in the semi-finals. After having won on clay and on wood Rosewall ended the season by winning on grass at the New South Wales Championships, Sydney cementing his status as the best all-court player that year. Robert Roy of L.A. Permail Cup, Clack Copyright Bear Hyedens and Philippe Chitria of Tennis de France, Michel Sutter, Christian Bussers, Peter Rowley, Robert Geist, Tony Trabert, John Newcomb, Rod Laver and also the New York Times and World Tennis magazine considered Rose Wall as the new number one in the world, 1962. In 1962 Rose Wall completely dominated the pro circuit. Not only did he retain his Wembley and Roland Garros crowns, still the two biggest events by far in 1962, but he also won five of the next six biggest tournaments. He thus captured seven of the eight biggest events that year, the only one he lost was Zurich where he was defeated in the semi-finals by Segura who in his turn left the title to Hode. Rosewall also won two small tournaments in New Zealand and one more, the Australian TV series. It seems that Rose Wall lost only eight matches in 1962 a Hode twice, Jaimono, Ayala, Buchholz, Segura, Anderson and Robert Haylett, 1963. In an Australasian tour played on grass Rose Wall defeated Laver 11 matches to two. A US tour followed with Rose Wall and Laver, Jaimono, Ayala and two Americans, Butch Buchholz and Barry Mackay. In the first phase of this tour, lasting two and a half months, each player faced each other about eight times. Rosewall ended first, Buchholz, Jaimono, Mackay and Ayala. In this round robin phase Rosewall beat Laver in the first five meetings, ensuring thus a 13-match winning streak and Laver won the last three. Then a second and final phase of the tour opposed the first and the second of the first phase to determine the final winner met the fourth. In 18 matches Rose Wall beat Laver 14 times to conquer the U.S. Tour first place. In mid-May the tournament season started. In those occasions Rose Wall only beat Laver for a Euro 3 and won five tournaments, but in particular he won the three greatest tournaments of the year 1963, chronologically the U.S. Pro at Forest Hills on grass where he defeated Laver 6 a Euro 4 6 a Euro 2 6 a Euro 2. The French pro at Calverton onward where his victim in the final was again Lava who later praised his conqueror, I played the finest tennis I believe I've ever produced, and he beat me, the Wembley pro on wood. In those tournaments Rose Wall won three times while Laver reached two finals and one quarter final, Rocket becoming thus the second player in the world. Rose Wall then beat Laver 34 matches to 12. The fact that Rose Wall also won the major events clearly indicates that he was the number one in 1963 but also that the best pros were almost certainly the best players in the world during the previous years. 1964, in 1964 Rose Wall won one main tournament, the French pro over Labour on Wood. At the end of the South African tour, Rose Wall also beat Lava 6 a Euro 4 6 a Euro 1 6 a Euro 4 in a challenge match considered by some as a world championship match. 
held in Ellis Park, Johannesburg. In the official Pro Points rankings taking into account 19 Pro tournaments, Rosewall ended number one in 1964 with 78 points beating number two Lever and number three Gonzalez. Nevertheless that ranking A, brushed aside at least 10 tournaments because Macaulay has traced at least 29 Pro tournaments played by the touring pros and several short tours in B, granted each tournament the same points and then was unfair to the big events where Lava was globally superior to Rose Wall. The majority of tennis witnesses agreed this points rankings for they considered Rose Wall the number one in 1964. Rod Lava himself after his triumph over Rosewall at Wembley said Euro Euro unregistered trademark they still plenty of ambitions left and would like to be the world's number one. Despite this win, I'm not there yet a Euro Ken is. I may have beaten him more often than he has beaten me this year but he has won the biggest tournaments except here. Euro Euro unregistered trademark they lost to other people but Ken has a Euro unregistered trademark T. Lover has made a great season and could too claim the top rank. Rocket has captured two very great tournaments, A, the US Pro over Rosewall and Gonzalez and B, Wembley Pro over Rosewall in one of their best match ever. Lover was equal to Rosewall in big direct confrontations, two all. Rosewall has the edge over Lover if we consider their clashes against their greatest rival, Gonzalez at that year Rose Wall has beaten Gonzalez 11 times out of 14 while Lava was beaten by Gonzalez 8 times out of 13. But Lava won one more tournament than Rose Wall and above all Rocket was clearly superior to Rose Wall in minor direct confrontations, defeating Rose Wall 13 times out of 15 making thus a 1964 Lava Rose Wall win loss record of 15 a Euro 4. So the pro's leadership began to change. 1965 Next year until mid-September Rose Wall and Lava were quite equal, the latter winning more tournaments including the U.S. Pro Indoors at New York City and the Masters Pro at Los Angeles but Rose Wall struck two great blows during the summer of 1965 by winning very easily the U.S. Pro on the Longwood CC grass courts crashing Gonzalez, 6 a Euro 3 6 a Euro 2 6 a Euro 4, and Lava, 6 a Euro 4 6 a Euro 3 6 a Euro 3, in the last rounds and again Lava, 6 a Euro 3. 6 a Euro 2 6 a Euro 4, in the French Pro on the fast wooden courts at Cowburton. But from Wembley to the end of the year, Lava became irresistible and Rose Wall had to recognize Lava's supremacy. 1966, 1966 was the year of the greatest rivalry between the two Australians who dominated tennis. They shared all the titles and the finals of the five greatest tournaments. Rose Wall won the Madison Square Garden and his cherished French Pro tournaments over Lava, the latter capturing Forest Hills Pro, the US Pro and Wembley Pro with Rose Wall finalist each time. Of the main tournaments contested by the troupe, Lava won 9, Rose Wall 8 and Gymano 3. If we include lesser tournaments Lava won 15, Rose Wall 9 and Gymano 6. In head-to-head -head matches between Rose Wall and Lava, both player won 7 each. Rose Wall was then the clear undisputed vice king of the courts. 1967, Rose Wall's true decline began in 1967 when many players defeated several times Sydney's little master. Not only did Lever a Euro almost invincible on fast courts and at the time the undisputed professional tennis king a Euro reached the apogee of his career, but Gimeno threatened Rose Wall's second place. The 20 main tournaments of the year were shared by A. Lever. Ten titles including the five biggest ones, all played on fast courts, Newport R.R., Johannesburg Ellis Park, Cowburton Pro in April, B, Rose Wall, six titles, C, Gimeno, three titles and D, Stoll, one tournament. Including lesser tournaments Lava's supremacy was even more obvious, 1, Lava 18 tournaments plus two small tours, 2, Rose Wall seven tournaments, 3, Stoll four tournaments and four, Gymano three tournaments. In head-to-head -head matches Rose Wall trailed Lava five a Euro eight and was equal to Gymano seven a Euro seven. Before 1967 Gymano always trailed Rose Wall in direct confrontations but that year they split their matches. Rose Wall defeated Gymano in Los Angeles, Madison Square Garden, St. Louis, Newport, Johannesburg, Durban and Wembley whereas Gymano won in Cincinnati, 
U.S. Pro, East London, Port Elizabeth, Johannesburg, Marseille, French Pro. Having won more tournaments than Gimeno, Rose Wall deserved nevertheless the second place behind Lava, the latter being for the first year the number one by far after the 1964 Euro 1966 close rivalry between the two Australians. Forbidden to contest the greatest traditional events, Davis Cup and Grand Slams, during nearly eleven and a half years from 1957 to March 30, 1968, Rose Wall reached his best level during this period, in particular from 1960 to 1966, by winning at least 62 tournaments and seven small tours. Open closed career, April 1968 through July 1972, 1968. In 1968 there were many different sorts of players, amateur players, dependent on their national and international federations, allowed to play the amateur events and also the open events but couldn't receive official prize money, registered players, also dependent on their national and international federations, eligible to play the Davis Cup and forbidden to play pro events as an amateur, but authorized to take prize money in the open events contrary to an amateur, professionals under contract with NTL who had to first play NTL tournaments, professionals under contract with WCT who had first to play WCT tournaments. At the beginning of the open era Dave Dixon, WCT boss, didn't allow his players to enter tournaments where NTL players were present, there was no WCT player at the two first Open tournaments, Bonmouth and Roland Garros 1968, while all the NTL players were present. The first tournament where NTL and WCT players competed against each other, was the US Pro, held at Longwood in June 1968, freelance professionals. In 1968 there were a, an amateur circuit including the Davis Cup and the Australian Championships, b, two pro circuits, the World Championship of Tennis Circuit and the National Tennis League Circuit which met on four tournaments, and c, an open circuit. Many events were still reserved to the amateur players between 1968 and 1972. Two tournaments were at the top in 1968, Wimbledon, and the US Open, played on grass, where all the best competed. The third position can be claimed by the Roland Garros Open, being the first Grand Slam tournament, but with a lesser field, missing several of the best clay court players. Next probably came the first Pacific Southwest Open in Los Angeles with all the best players present. Other notable tournaments that year were the Queen's Club Tournament and the Greatest Pro Tournaments where all the NTL and WCT pros could compete as the US Pro, the French Pro, the Jack Raymer Tournament of Champions at Wembley in November and perhaps the Madison Square Garden Pro in December with the four best pros of each organization. In this context Rose Wall played almost all NTL Pro tournaments in 1968, the four NTL WCT tournaments and some Open tournaments. He entered his first Open tournament at 33 years 5 months and 19 days at Bonmouth on clay and successively defeated Gimeno and Lava. At Roland Garros, the first Grand Slam tournament of the Open era, Rose Wall confirmed his status of probably the best clayette player in the world by defeating Laver in the final 6 a Euro 3, 6 a Euro 3, 6 a Euro 1. Bad defeats followed against some of the upcoming 1967 amateur players but his end of the year was better. He reached the semi-finals of the US. Open, was finalist to Laver at the Pacific Southwest Open, defeating the new US. Open winner, Arthur Ashe, 6 a Euro 3 6 a Euro 2 and in November captured the Wembley Pro Tournament over WCT player, John Newcomb. At age 34 Rose Wall was still ranked number 3 in the world behind Lava and Ashe according to Lance Tingay and Bud Collins, 1969, his true decline, having begun in 1967, was confirmed in 1969. Rose Wall was no longer the best clayette player because Lava had stolen his crown in the final of Roland Garros and moreover the Rose Wall won only three tournaments that year and was ranked no by Collins and Tingay. Having won at age 35 almost all the great events except for Wimbledon, this tournament became Rose Wall's priority in the 70s. The obvious reason it had eluded him was that for ten years he had been unable, due to the rules that had excluded him because of his professional status to enter the competition at a time when he was at his best a Euro, 
and particularly between 1961 and 1965 when he was probably the best grass skirt player in the world. Knowing he could reach the last rounds of the French tournament and then be too tired to play well at Wimbledon, Rose Wall decided not to play Roland Garros anymore in the 70s in order to be in optimal condition for Wimbledon. 1970, being an NTL player at the beginning of 1970 he didn't play the Australian Open held at the White City Stadium in Sydney in January because NTL boss, George McCall, and his players thought that the prize money was too low for a Grand Slam tournament. In March, a tournament, sponsored by Dunlop, was organised at the same site, with a much denser field because of better prize money and a better date. The same class players as in the Australian Open were present and in addition not only the NTL pros participated but even some independent pros, such as Alina Florence Stars, who usually did not make the trip to Australia. Many considered this tournament as the unofficial Australian Open with Lover dominating Rose Wall in five sets. After a depleted Roland Garros without the WCT players, all the best players met again at Wimbledon. This time arrested Rose Wall reached the final and took the young Newcomb, his nine-and-a-half-year-old junior, to five sets but ultimately succumbed, five a year oh seven, six a year oh three, six a year oh two, three a year oh six, six a year oh one. Two months later at the U.S. Open, one of the two 1970 Grand Slams with all the best players. Rose Wall took revenge in their semi-final match in three straight sets before overcoming Tony Roche in the final, 2 a year 06, 6 a year 04, 7 a year 06, 6 a year 03. To fight against the WCT and NTL promoters, who controlled their own players and did not allow them to compete where they wanted, Kramer invented in December 1969, the Grand Prix circuit open to all players. The first Grand Prix circuit was held in 1970 and comprised 20 tournaments from Bonmouth in April to Stockholm in December. These tournaments gave points according to their categories and the players' performances with the top six ranked players invited to a six-man tournament called the Masters. All the amateurs and independent pros fully invested themselves in this circuit while the contract pros firstly played their circuit and eventually played in some Grand Prix tournaments. Rose Wall and Lover succeeded well in both circuits. The final Grand Prix ranking was 1, Cliff Ritchie, 2, Arthur Ashe, 3, Ken Rose Wall. Having qualified for the Masters Rose Wall was again third behind winner Stan Smith and his 1970 nemesis Lava. After his 1967 a year 1969 steady decline, 1970 saw a rejuvenated Rose Wall who was just one set short of winning the Wimbledon and U.S. Open double. 1970 was a year where no player dominated the circuit and different arguments were given to designate the world champion. Some, among them Newcomb and a panel of journalists which made the 1971 WCT draw, considered Lover the best player because he won most tournaments, made most prize money and had a dominantly positive head-to-head -head record against both Rose Wall and Newcomb. But Lover failed at Wimbledon and the US Open, the two big tournaments, losing each time in the round of 16. Other tennis pundits, as Joe McCauley in World Tennis or Lance Tingay in his annual rankings, ranked Newcomb first because he won the most prestigious tournament, Wimbledon with Rose Wall second in both rankings, Lava respectively third and fourth and Roche respectively fourth and third. But considering that Wimbledon in the U.S. Open were the two big events of 1970 Newcomb and Rose Wall were the choices for the number one player in the world. If we consider the fifth set lost by Rose Wall against Newcomb at Wimbledon, Newcomb is number one, but many statisticians favor Rose Wall, in their two Grand Slam tournaments clashes each player won one match but Newcomb won the most prestigious title, while Rose Wall won more sets. Rose Wall ended third in the Grand Prix circuit and Newcomb seventh and didn't qualify for the Masters where only the first six were admitted. Rose Wall finished third in the Masters. In the other tournaments with the best fields both players were even, Rose Wall was runner-up at Dunlop and semi-finalist at Wembley and Newcomb was runner-up at Los Angeles and semi-finalist at Philadelphia. In the pro circuit including the first annual Tennis Champions Classic and the WCT circuit, Rose Wall had a better record than Newcomb. In Tennis Champions Classic, a succession of challenge matches, 
Newcomb played and lost his two matches against the veteran Gonzalez and Rosewall while Rosewall ended second, winning four matches and losing two. In the WCT circuit Rosewall won two tournaments and Newcomb won. In all the circuits Rosewall won six tournaments and Newcomb four out of 24. In head-to-head -head matches Rosewall beat Newcomb five times out of six. Rosewall earned $140,455 while Newcomb made $78,251. Judith Lyon of the French sports paper L.A. Permail Cup, approved these statistics by ranking Rosewall as the number one player ahead of Newcomb and the panel of experts for the Martini and Rousseau Cup also had Rosewall first, narrowly over Lava. Meanwhile in his book Robert Geist ranked the three Australians equal number ones. 1971 after his runner-up finishes at Sydney in Wimbledon and his victory at the U.S. Open in 1970, Rosewall continued his good performances in 1971 in the Great Grass Court tournaments. One year after the first Dunlop Open was held in Sydney, Rosewall was back in Sydney in March, this time for the Australian Open held on the White City Courts. For once, this tournament deserved the Grand Slam tournament label. During the 14 first editions of the Open Tournament, only the 1969 and the 1971 editions had a strong field with many, but not all, of the best players. Because it was sponsored by Dunlop in 1971, all the World Championship tennis players entered and so on, and some independent pros also played. Nevertheless, Stan Smith, Cliff Ritchie, Clark Grabner, and the not yet good on grass players Alina Florin Stars and Jan Cadia were missing. Rose Wall won the tournament, his second consecutive Grand Slam win, without losing a single set and defeated Roy Emerson and Ocker before beating Ash in the final 6 a Euro 1, 7 a Euro 5, 6 a Euro 3. Rose Wall and most other WCT players did not play the French Open. Yet, Rose Wall still tried to reach his 70s goal by winning Wimbledon. In the quarterfinals, Rose Wall needed about four hours to defeat Richie 6 a Euro 8, 5 a Euro 7, 6 a Euro 4, 9 a Euro 7, 7 a Euro 5 whereas Nickham quickly defeated Colin Dibley 6 a Euro 1, 6 a Euro 2, 6 a Euro 3. In the semi-finals, the older Rose Wall was no match for the fitter Nickham and lost 6 a Euro 1, 6 a Euro 1, 6 a Euro 3. Later in the summer, Rose Wall and some other WCT players did not play the U.S. Open because of the growing conflict between the International Lawn Tennis Federation and the WCT. His children's illnesses was an additional reason for Rose Wall not playing this tournament. As a contract pro, Rose Wall was not allowed to play the Davis Cup and thus concentrated mainly on the WCT circuit organized similarly to the Grand Prix circuit which was the equivalent for the independent pros, 20 tournaments, each giving the same points amount. The top eight players in ranking WCT points were invited to the WCT Finals, an eight-man tournament, equivalent of the Grand Prix Masters for the WCT players, played in November in Houston in Dallas, USA. When the WCT players were off they could play tournaments on the other pro circuit, managed by the ILTF, the Grand Prix circuit rather reserved in 1971 to the independent pros. Some tournaments such as Berkeley, which had a stronger field than the U.S. Open, were held by both organizations. But the war between the officials and WCT climaxed in a ban by the ILTF beginning on January 1, 1972, of the WCT players from the Grand Prix circuit. Rosewall ended third on the 1971 WCT circuit behind Lava and Ocker and qualified for the WCT finals. He won the title taking his revenge over Newcomb, who had beaten Rosewall at Wimbledon, in the quarters, defeating Ocker in the semis and beating Lava 6 a Euro 4 1 a Euro 6 7 a Euro 6 7 a Euro 6 in the final in what was considered at the time as the best match, with their 1970 Sydney final, between the two rivals since their 1968 French Open final. As a WCT player Rosewall played few Grand Prix tournaments but he had earned enough points to play the Grand Prix Masters held about 10 days after his WCT finals. He refused the invitation as he was very tired after such a long season and took his holidays at the end of the year. Newcomb was in an identical situation and acted the same and both players came back at the same tournament, 
1972 Australian Open. In 1971 Rose War won eight tournaments and 78.4% of his matches and in direct confrontations trailed Newcomb won a Euro 3, Lover 2 a Euro 3 but dominated Smith won a Euro 0. He did not play Kadir that year. Collins, a lion ranked Rose Wall third after Newcomb and or Smith. Tingay ranked Rose Wall fourth, Reno Tomorsi first, and the Martini Rossi Award was given jointly to Smith and Newcomb. Geist ranked Rose Wall co no one tied with Newcomb and Smith. That year, as in 1970, there was no clear undisputed world number one. 1972 1972 was a true return to separate circuits because all traditional ILTF events held from January to July were forbidden to the WCT players. As ever this included the Davis Cup but also Roland Garros and Wimbledon. The 1972 Australian Open organisers used a trick to avoid the ILTF's ban of the WCT players. They held the tournament from December 27, 1971 four days before the ILTF's ban could be applied, to January 3, 1972. Thus all contract and, of course, independent pros could have played but few were interested because the tournament was held during Christmas and New Year's Day. In moving the dates from March to December a Euro January they almost killed the tournament which happily strengthened since 1983. A fragile agreement in the spring of 1972 let the WCT players come back to the traditional circuit in August. The U.S. Open, won by Alina Florin Stars, was the greatest event of the years only in this tournament were all the best players present with the exception of Tony Roche who suffered from a tennis elbow for most of the 1971 a Euro 1973 period. Later that year two other tournaments had good fields with WCT and independent pros, the Pacific Southwest Open at Los Angeles and, to a lesser extent, Stockholm both won by Stan Smith. In many 1972 rankings there were six or seven WCT players in the world top ten, so the WCT finals held in May at Dallas were considered as one of the greatest events after the U.S. Open. In what is considered one of the two best matches played in 1972, the other being the Wimbledon final, and the best Rose Wall Labour match of the Open era Rose Wall won his last major title of his long career, for a Euro 6 6 a Euro 0 6 a Euro 3 6 a Euro 7 7 a Euro 6, because of the ILTF's ban once again Rose Wall could not enter Wimbledon. True Open Career, August 1972 through 1980, 1972 from August 1972 players could enter almost all the tournaments they wanted and the real open era began. Rose Wall won seven tournaments in 1972, including the very depleted Australian Open, when he becomes the oldest ever Grand Slam male single champion, and was ranked, by Judith Elion or Tingay or Macaulay, number three behind Smith and Alina Florin Stars. He lost in the second round of the 1972 U.S. Open against Mark Cox, 1973, for Rose Wall the beginning of 1973 was identical to the second half of 1972, a desert. He recorded possibly his worst defeat in his whole career at the 1973 Australian Open when seeded first he was defeated by German Karl Mahler in his first match, 2 a Euro 6, 3 a Euro 6, 2 a Euro 6. Between May 1972 and April 1973 Rose Wall captured only two minor titles, Tokyo WCT in Brisbane where the only top 20 player was himself. If 1967 has been the first year of a relative decline with however many highlights, 1973 has been the real start of Rose Wall's true decline. Admittedly he was still one of the best players but not one fighting for the first place. Rose Wall did not play Wimbledon that year as the edition was boycotted by the ATP players. His best performances in 1973 were firstly his semi-final at the U.S. Open and secondly his third place at the WCT Finals. He also won at Houston WCT, Cleveland WCT, Charlotte WCT, Osaka and Tokyo. He was still ranked in the top ten. Tomorsi ranked Rose Wall 4, Tingay 6, ATP 6, Collins 5, and Macaulay 7. 1974, 1974 was the first year since 1952 that Rose Wall did not win a single tournament. However, 
he entered nine tournaments and reached three finals including Wimbledon and Forest Hills. This was his last Wimbledon final, at the age of 39. Despite the strong support of the crowd, who were eager to see him finally claim a Wimbledon title, he lost to the 18 years younger Jimmy Connors. Due to the two last strong performances he was ranked between second and the seventh place by many tennis journalists. He ranked only eighth in the ATP rankings because he played too few tournaments knowing that he succumbed to the charms of the World Team Tennis Organization. Rose Wall coached the Pittsburgh Triangles team in 1974. 1975, he still stayed in the top 10 or the top 15 in 1975 winning five tournaments and his two singles in Davis Cup against New Zealand. Rose Wall made his last attempt at Wimbledon, at over 40, and as in his first Wimbledon Open he lost in the same round and against the same player. 1976, in 1976 Rose Wall quit the top 10 but stayed in the top 20 for he won three tournaments Brisbane. Jackson WCT and Hong Kong, 1977 a Euro 1982, 1977 was Rose Wall's last year in the top 20, which means he was one of the best players for 26 years. He won his last tournaments in Hong Kong and Tokyo at the age of 43. Rose Wall played in the 1977 Sydney Indoor Tournament. Approaching his 43rd birthday he beat the number 3 in the world Vitas Gerolatus 7 a Euro 6 6 a Euro 4 and put in a credible performance losing to Jimmy Connor 7 a Euro 5 6 a Euro 4 6 a Euro 2 in the final. The following year he lost in the semi-finals at 44 years of age. Afterwards, he gradually retired. In October 1980 at the Melbourne Indoor Tournament, at nearly 46 years of age. Rose Wall defeated American Butch Waltz, ranked world number 49, in the first round before losing to Paul McNamee. Rose Wall made a very brief comeback at 47 years of age in a non ATP tournament, the New South Wales Hard Kurt Championships in Grafton in February, where he reached the final, losing to Brett Edwards 6 a Euro 4, 6 a Euro 2. Rivalries Gonzalez and Laver are the two players that Rose Wall most often met. His meetings with Laver are better documented and detailed than those with Gonzalez. Except the first year and the last year they played, the statistics of their meetings show a strong domination by Laver. But they are biased before when Rose Wall was the better of the two Australians in 1963. In the open era a match score of 23 a Euro 9 in favour of Lava can be documented, overall a score of 79 a Euro 63. Including tournaments and one night stands, Rose Wall and Gonzalez played at least 182 matches, all of them as professionals, with some results from the barnstorming pro tours lost or badly recorded. A match score of 107 a Euro 75 in favor of Gonzalez can be documented. Career statistics and records Grand Slam tournaments, Singlazer 8 titles, 8 runners up, Pro Slam tournaments, Singles of 15 titles, four runners up, other events, records, all time records, open era records, these records were attained in open era of tennis. Notes An observation to make is that the draw of pro majors was significantly smaller than the traditional tournaments of Grand Slam. Usually they only had 16 or even less professional players. Though they were the top 16 ranked players in the world at the time, this meant only four rounds of play instead of the modern six or seven rounds of play. Miscellaneous comments, in his 1979 autobiography, Kramer writes that Rose Wall was a backcourt player when he came into the pros, but he learned very quickly how to play the net. Eventually, for that matter, he became a master of it, as much out of physical preservation as for any other reason. I guarantee you that Kenny wouldn't have lasted into his 40s as a world-class player if he hadn't learned to serve and volley. Kramer includes the Australian in his list of the 21 greatest players of all time. During his long playing career he remained virtually injury-free, something that helped him to still win tournaments at the age of 43 and remain ranked in the top 15 in the world. Although he was a finalist four times at Wimbledon, it was the one major tournament that eluded him. Rose Wall was a finalist at the 1974 U.S. Open at 39 years 310 days old, making him the oldest player to participate in two Grand Slam finals in the same year. Before that, 
In 1972 Rose Wall won the Australian Open final at age 37 and two months making him the oldest player ever to win a Grand Slam male singles title. In 1995 Gonzalez said of him, he became better as he got older, more of a complete player. With the exception of me and Frank Sedgman, he could handle everybody else. Just the way he played, he got under Hode's skin, but he had a forehand weakness and a serve weakness. In 182 matches against Pancho Gonzalez he won 75 and lost 107. In 70 matches against Lou Hode he won 45 and lost 25. Rose Wall was also known as being extremely careful about his spending, like a number of other Australian players of the time. The Australians themselves characterised this as having short arms and deep pockets. Kramer writes that an Australian radio reporter once asked Pancho Seguero what his single biggest thrill in tennis had been. The night Frank Sedgman bought dinner, Segu replied. Honours, in the Queen's Birthday Honours of 1971, he was appointed a member of the Order of the British Empire. In the Australia Day Honours of 1979, he was appointed a member of the Order of Australia. Rose Wall was inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame in Newport, Rhode Island, in 1980. In 1985 he was inducted into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. He is an Australian living treasure. See also Tennis male player statistics, tennis records of all time, men's singles, tennis records of the open era Euro men's singles, further reading, Rose Wall, Ken. Rowley, Peter T. Ken Rose Wall, 20 years at the top. London, Castle. ISBN A 0 304 29735 6. References The Game, My 40 Years in Tennis, Jack Kramer with Frank Defford, External Links, Ken Rose Wall at the International Tennis Hall of Fame, Ken Rose Wall at the International Tennis Federation, Ken Rose Wall at the Davis Cup.